Hello everyone. In this lecture, I am going to take the fourth part in the pregnancy with Rh negative woman. So, in the previous three parts, we have discussed with the basic concept of Rh incompatibility, alumnity, and the impact on the fetus when mother forms certain antibodies against the Rh antigen. So, the videos of all these uh, I have mentioned in the description box below. So please go through with this all. So you may have the basic continuity with the whole topic. Now in this part, I am going to take the test or the investigation that must be carried out in the Rh negative mother so we can manage her accordingly. So the basic thing is that we must collect the blood group. The blood typing of the woman must be cleared beforehand. And uh, if the mother is negative, once in antenatal period, we confirm that the woman is negative. At that moment, we must take the blood sample of father as well to confirm the uh, blood group and typing of the father as well. Because if the father is also negative, in such condition, the both are the compatible matings and there the fetus 100% will be negative and in such situation incompatibility never arises okay but suppose if the father is rh positive in such condition we can uh, rule out that whether he is homozygous or heterozygous because in homozygous father 100% the fetus will affect uh, all the fetuses will be rh positive and the incompatibility 100% will be arises but suppose if he is heterozygous in such situation, 50% chance is only there where incompatibility arises. Because if the fetus is negative, again, uh, it will be compatible with mother and uh, the incompatibility will not be arises. Okay. So we can check the genotype of the father as well. So if the father is heterozygous in such condition, even though we can check the Rh status of fetus as well. So that can be checked by the two procedures, but these are the invasive ones. One is amniocentesis and the another is CVS, coronic villus samplex. So in amniocentesis, we take out the amniocytes and by this we can check the fetal DNA. And uh, in this fetal DNA, we can check the blood group of fetus. And in same manner CVS, coronic villus sampling where we can take out the trophoblast where we can identify the fetal DNA and in that we can identify the blood group of fetus. But as we know both are the invasive procedures and if the woman is not sensitized yet then this can be the reason for sensitization. This can lead into the fetal maternal bleeding and the woman gets sensitized and she forms antibody against these antigen. So uh, there are the other mean also like we can take the sample of mother plasma and in that also the fetal DNA is present and by this we can check out the fetal blood, blood group uh, in the maternal plasma as well. But the test which is being carried out importantly is the ICT indirect Coombe test. Okay, So this must be carried out in every center because by this test, we can detect the antibodies which are being formed in mother's blood that can be easily tested. Okay, So indirect means uh, we are taking the sample of mother. So thereby it is indirect. And direct means we are taking the sample of blood of fetus itself. So it is the direct. So ultimately we are finding the antibodies, the Rh antibodies which are being formed in mother's body against Rh antigen, this is being tested in this uh, Coom test. So, so in this Coom test, we are taking the sample of mother and we are adding anti-human antibody in that and check the agglutination. If agglutination forms, means if uh, the blood clumps are formed, it means the test is positive, the woman is sensitized, she forms antibodies against the fetus, it is already there in her blood. Okay, but if it is negative, it shows the woman is not sensitized yet. She didn't form any antibodies till now. Okay, so that shows the positive and negative Coombe test. So if the woman is positive, means she formed the antibodies, then manage the woman accordingly, considering her 
the immunized pregnancy and manage accordingly. But if the test is negative, it means the antibodies are not there in mother's blood. Then in primary gravid woman, if we are uh, doing this test at 12 week, then we can repeat this at 28 week. And in multi gravid woman, we can uh, repeat this test till 24 week of the station and thereby we can repeat it two weekly to check whether the woman is sensitized or not continuously throughout pregnancy okay so uh, but the line of management that what all we do in sensitized and in non sensitized women uh, will discuss in another video okay so this is the test through which we can detect the antibodies that are being formed in mother's blood are tested and on the base of that we can consider the woman is sensitized and non-sensitized test is positive means sensitized test is negative means non-sensitized even we can check the antibody titers by using this ICT with dilution method so in that we can estimate how much uh, antibodies are being formed against these all cells so if the titer is 1 is to 8 then it indicates that uh, uh, the woman is already being sensitized but it is not that much dangerous and if this titus rise up if it estimates 1 is to 16 and more than that it means the fetus is severely affected and the rbc get destructed severely and even though it is too dangerous that the fetus can develop hydrox fetalis so it is usually being considered as a critical titer 1 is to 16 so by this ICT titer itself we can estimate that uh, the fetal destruction is severe or not okay now the another important test that we can do to check the amount of fetal maternal bleeding okay so the test that estimate the amount of blood of fetus that enter in the maternal circulation is done by KB test the Klehor bed K test or also known as acid illusion test okay so in this what we do we take the sample of mother and will add acid reagent in that and check in scope that uh, if the fetal RBCs are present they are completely resistant to that acid reagent and that all will not destroy it and shows dark stained cells okay uh, dark red uh, stained cells we can visualize in that slide but comparative to that the mother's rbc's get destroyed destroyed they become lysed by this acid content so they became pale and ghost in appearance okay so the dark red pinkish stained cells denotes that the feto maternal bleeding is taken place and we can quantify we can measure the amount of rbcs that enter in the maternal circulation so this is the quantitative test so by this kb test we can estimate the amount of rbcs that are being entered in the maternal circulation so this is the quantitative test we can measure in percentage that how much blood enters in the mother circulation so this is the acid elution test now the another test through which we can estimate that the fetal develops the anemia or not uh, is to be done by one invasive technique but nowadays it is not being used uh, frequently that is amniocentesis so through this amniocentesis we take the sample of amniotic fluid and we can check the optical density of this amniotic fluid under spectrophotometry so in this uh, we can use one already plotted graph that is the Lily's graph where the week of gestation is plotted against the optical density uh, and there we can write down the optical density of amniotic fluid so we know that uh, if the RBC get destructed the fetal RBC get destructed they form bilirubin and this bilirubin uh, releases in the amniotic fluid so if the bilirubin count is more how much bilirubin is being formed that we can estimate on this graph so the optical density of liquor m9 become disturbed when the bilirubin is being formed more 
okay so this optical density is being changed and it is plotted in graph as a deviational bulge so wherever this deviational bulge is plotted in the graph that can estimate the fetal anemia suppose if this deviational bulge is plotted in zone 1 because there are three zone in this lily's graph 1 2 and 3 1 indicate the mild 2 indicate means moderate and the 3 indicate severe so suppose if this deviational bulge according to the week of gestation is plotted on zone 1 means it shows the fetus rbcs are not destructed that much Yes, although bilirubin is being formed, but it is not that much severe. So we can continue the pregnancy till term. But if it is plotted, the divisional bulge is being plotted in the zone 2 and 3, then it means it causes severe destructions of RBC and there is more bilirubin which is being formed in the fetal blood vessels. So this optical density of amniotic fluid is changed at 450 nm wavelength it is best to be marked at 450 nm wavelength and it denotes that how much the fetal rbcs get destructed by change in optical density of amniotic fluid by bilirubin production so the technique which is being used most frequently is the mca middle cerebral artery color doppler where we can check the peak systolic velocity okay so what happened as the fetal rbc get restricted more severely what happened the fetus uh, compensate the loss uh, and try to deliver more blood toward the vital organ to preserve their function so the blood flow toward the heart and brain is increases Okay, because RBC get destructed severely. So to compensate that loss, the flow get increases. So by the use of color Doppler, we can check the peak velocity, the peak systolic velocity, the flow toward the brain is increases. And that we can estimate in the middle cerebral artery. So if the value of uh, PSV is more than 1.5 bomb, multiple of median, that indicates that the RBC get destructed severely and the fetus has severe hemolytic diseases and the anemia is there. So to identify the fetal anemia, MCA is better option. The color Doppler is better option on amniocentesis and it can be performed from 18 to 35 week of gestation. Okay. So here in this lecture, we have discussed with the important investigation or the test we can perform in the Irish negative mother and according to the results, we can manage the woman accordingly. So that all we discuss in the another part. Thank you.